Now, what's new today is, uh, or especially in the last year, is this idea of uh, asterisk applications, which are both exciting and also uh, help pay the bills. So they actually have revenue associated with them. Um, and the list of the ones I'm going through is just a list that I know because Digium was involved in, uh, in essentially all of these, but I'm sure there are many others uh, as well. Um, first one is sort of a shameless plug. Our, our own product, uh, Switchbox, that we recently acquired, combines Asterisk as the core voice technology with a bunch of Web 2.0 features. Uh, to provide uh, enhanced pre presence as well as integration with Salesforce.com and uh, Sugar CRM, uh, Google Maps, and similar technologies. There is an example um, that we were involved in for a billboard in Times Square. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but uh, Times Square is a uh, an area in Manhattan that, that is famous for having all kinds of uh, very sophisticated billboards. And uh, one of them is set up such that it's showing these videos and you actually call in with your cell phone. And it tries to get the delay of the video and the delay of the cell phone lined up such that you hear the audio in real time that corresponds to the video that's being displayed on the billboard. And that was done uh, uh, through Asterisk. Unwired Buyer, which is a, uh, a company that uh, Kevin's particularly familiar with since he did a lot of the technology for it, which allows you to participate in eBay over your telephone and uh, uses Asterisk for all the interactive uh, voice pieces, including the ability to, uh, uh, to interrupt an existing prompt when the situation changes. Uh, on, so for example, if you're being outbid, even if it's telling you one thing, it can interrupt what it's saying and start saying something different. And even Allison uses it. In fact, uh, she told uh, one time a story recently about how she had bid on an item and she got outbid. And so the system called her and she heard her own voice saying, you are not the highest bidder. And she got very upset. I won't say the exact words that she said, but... Uh, Live on the Net is a, a company that does uh, sporting events uh, in the States. And uh, they've got a setup with Asterisk to allow people to uh, not only listen to live sporting events, but to be able to uh, participate by talking to other people. So just as you know, you guys might go down to, uh, to the bar and, and, and watch a, a, a football slash soccer game <laughs> on the on TV and talk to your friends about it and converse, this is the ability to do that in, a, in an online fashion where you're all uh, talking to other people, watching the same event, but not in the same location. And we're starting to get into more vertical, more and more vertical spaces here. Um, Penland Dairy is an example. Uh, this is a, a dairy farm in which they used asterisk to allow the dairy farmers to be able to call and, and know how much milk their cows had produced and to be able to, to do their financial planning since they live sort of more paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and this is, again, an example of an application that's, that's very focused on a, a, a particular niche. Um, and perhaps uh, lastly here, the... Uh, Psychic Phone Service, we did uh, uh, some work for them because um, they wanted, when people called in while they were waiting to talk to one of the psychics, they wanted to be able to hear, wanted them to hear the psychic readings of other people that were being read at that point instead of just getting hold music as a competitive differentiator. So we don't know how they found this, but... Uh, but they did. So I um, actually had a few more slides in here. I wanted to a little bit tell you guys kind of about um, some future areas of direction. Uh, a lot of people ask what are what are the new things that are going into Asterisk and, and uh, Kevin is going to talk to a great degree uh, on more specifics. But generally I would say that uh, Asterisk is 
uh, is gaining s some important technologies in clustering, in presence, um, but largely, uh, in, oh, in video, but largely, uh, I think that the, all this is about how the applications that are being built on top of Asterisk are what's going to really take it to the next level, at least in terms of features. We're doing everything we can to make the Asterisk core base stronger and stronger, but you know we will be uh, largely dependent upon all of you in the Asterisk community to start dreaming up how you can use the technology uh, to solve different problems and to address different verticals. So with that, I think I'll uh, go ahead and get uh, some questions. Should still be time, right? Yeah. Um, hi, Mark. I'm yeah. Stefan. Um, <laughs> uh, I and probably most of the, uh, these people here wondering, um, what about the German voice prompts? It's kind of a lag. Any plans for German voice prompts? German like Germany, oh. as you are? <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I'm certainly uh, open to the idea. Uh, we've recently done some work on the uh, uh, Asterisk GUI to make it easier to select international prompts. Um, obviously, I, I, I should say it's still not, well, you can select it. It's just we don't have the recordings there. I know there's some other people who have contributed recordings. Um, I would certainly be very open to if anyone has a particular uh, voice model that they would recommend that that we could work with them to establish uh, prompts in German. We currently have English, French, and Spanish, I think, official prompts. Is it a promise? I can give you the model. Oh, okay. Next week or the week after? or Whenever, as long as it uh, can be done on the same... We, we have sort of a standard... Uh, I don't want to say necessarily contract, but there's a standard arrangement that we have with each of the the voice models because you you need to be able to go back and get additional prompts and so on and and to have them be able to buy them through the website just like today you can buy uh, English, French, and Spanish prompts through the Digim website that will match the rest of your Astra system. Okay. So happy to talk to you about it uh, uh, afterwards there, but uh, it might be worth pointing out. Um, that more than half of Digium's business is outside of North America. So we are, we are a very uh, international company in terms of uh, the business that we do. Uh, and again, largely that's uh, due to uh, open source. OK. There's got to be more questions than that. Stefan will be upset that he asked me to speak for 30 minutes early. Mark, uh, I'll bounce off Stefan's question. Yes. Uh, recently... Ready? Can you go to the mic that we have? Do I need a mic? Yeah, please. Believe it or not. Can I give you a mic? I'm all Technology is not something. Mark, bouncing off Stefan's question about German, um, there's a, a fellow in Thailand who um, says he's rewritten voicemail to because their language. I don't know if you know Thai current, but I don't. <laughs> the grammar problems, right? You and I have talked about this before. What is my question? Is simpler than that, though. The question is, how does he go about? relating to someone at Digium to talk about these impro so-called improvements that he's made? Well, traditionally uh, what we do is we, we have the uh, Digium issue tracker at bugs.digium.com and you can submit your patches through there um, and voicemail and generally language support um, has always so far been a uh, I guess a very hard-coded kind of thing because there's so many different places in the code that it gets touched. So you end up with just a lot of special exceptions. And um, in principle, it seems like it should be something that would be just configurable where you're just updating configuration files to add support for new languages. But in practice, that turns out to be really difficult to do. 